reason for that. I don't know if it's like trying to soften up the defense, like fatigue those players, take the strength out of their legs, whatever else. Like if it's like, you know, a, a attrition type thing. But that's always been one thing I don't really understand. I'll be sometimes they get the ball. I'm like, oh, throw it over there. There's a hole or something. But then they just plow right into four guys. So, you know, like I said, I don't. I think because, in, you know, being American, growing up, the NFL, NBA, MLB, these things are like in the cultural fabric of the country. So growing up, you have some level of understanding of them, even if you aren't a fan. Because, uh, right, like, it, it, it inundates the culture. Like, and you use references to those sports outside the sports. Like, oh, that's a grand slam. Like, uh, you know, we're, we're down here and going into the fourth quarter. Like, these are terms you'll hear that are sports metaphors that are used in business, personal life, what have you. But obviously moving to another country with different sporting culture I don't have that same cultural understanding and knowledge that's intrinsic like people in Australia who aren't fans of rugby they probably still have an intrinsic understanding of the rules and how the game is played that I do not have right um, so that's one thing but then so last year, obviously, last year's Grand Final, many people thought that was, like, saying that's the best Grand Final of all time. I obviously don't have a point of reference for that, but it was an amazing watch. I, I thoroughly enjoyed that. I, I was completely convinced that the Panthers were going to lose that, that Grand Final until they come back and win it there at the end. Uh, Nathan Cleary being the hero at the very end, and I have... You might just see him if you if you look between the, these two springs. I have the Nathan Cleary bobblehead back there. Um, you know, obviously, I don't I don't have the knowledge, the understanding of the history of the sport, but I have friends, coworkers that say, "Oh, this is one of, if not the best team of all time." Now. I live and work in Penrith, so the people are probably a little biased. So I'm not going to 100% take their word for it. But obviously now having won four premierships in a row, where apparently since the salary cap was instituted, no team had even won two in a row before, is pretty impressive. And Nathan Cleary, I don't know where he ranks all time. Some people say, oh, one of the best of all time. One of the best at his position of all time. I'm not, I don't know. I'm not informed enough to make that call. All I know is I like watching him play. And it seems to me when I'm watching the games that he tends to be the best player on the field for either team. Except for Reynolds last year. Obviously, Cleary wins and gets the, the the hero moment at the end last Grand Final. But I thought Reynolds looked better than him overall. And I know Reynolds is a really renowned, good player. And then that guy uh, who plays for the Rabbitohs, his, his name escapes me at the moment, but the, the big mf -er, that guy. Um, but like I said, it feels like most
because the Storm absolutely dismantled their competition coming into the grand final. I think it was like 50 or 40 point win. And Panthers had a pretty close game against the Granola Sharks. It was a pretty tight match. And the Panthers were second on the ladder. Melbourne was top of the ladder. The Storm had overall looked like the better team all season. And now the Panthers play a sort of grind it out kill you in the trenches type of game from what I can ascertain but watching the storm this season it felt like they had a lot of creativity there the, they, it, when I was watching the storm this is going to be a terrible comparison and I apologize to any Australian viewers they reminded me of the Golden State Warriors before Kevin Durant got there when it was just Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, and Draymond Green. Because it was all like nice ball movement. It felt like they were doing really creative things to like get openings, to, to move the ball around. It, like that. I know it's a different sport, so it's not a one to one comparison. But it felt like a very free flowing type of game. We had a lot of players who were creatively gifted and skilled with the ball in their hand. Whereas Benrith is just kind of like, they do this, they just kind of beat you down. So I actually thought Benrith was going to lose this match. And it felt like to me, I'm like, okay, they've won three in a row. People thought two couldn't be done after three. People were talking about this is the best team of the modern era. I'm like... Can you really expect to win four in a row in the Melbourne team? Like I said, they had that creativity. I felt like they kind of had that that juice. They had that swag a little bit coming into this match. Uh, I think the betting market was in Melbourne's favor. Penrith um, were the underdogs coming into this match, I'm pretty sure. At least if you listen to the commentary, that's what it seemed to have been. Um... And Melbourne actually gets points on the board. First, uh, Harry Grant in the 22nd minute. But what's interesting about the match is it you know, started off and it felt like Melbourne was playing their usual type of game. Fast, creative, moving the ball around. Then as it dragged on, as we got closer to halftime, it felt like the je ne sais quoi was going out the window a little bit. And it felt like, in a way, that um, that they were playing Penrith's style of game. This is the thing, I don't know if it's a coaching thing or a personnel thing. I don't know what causes this to happen. But it feels like Penrith does this thing where they will force other teams to play their style of game. But if you're playing their style of game, they're the best at playing that style. So they're going to beat you playing that way. And again, sorry to all my Australians to use an NBA metaphor. It's like getting into a three-point shooting contest with the with the Golden State Warriors. You're not going to win the game that way. You have to beat them different. Ask the Houston Rockets. You have to beat them different. And when Brisbane almost won last year, I mean, they should have won that. It's because they were playing their own style. They weren't playing Penrith's style. But then as the match dragged on and we got into the dredges of the last 20 minutes, they slowed down. They started playing heavier. They started playing Penrith's style. And Melbourne did that, but Melbourne did that sooner. They did that before halftime even hit. They like were running out of steam. Uh, Taruva gets a try. Then Liam Martin gets a try, and then Cleary through the uprights just before the uh, before halftime. And people are going to talk about the 
is allowed to try the no try um, from Melbourne. Whether or not that had an impact on the game, I'm sure maybe it did. Again, I don't know enough to give my opinion either way on how that should have gone, like, half the time. I don't know why a six again happens. I don't know why sometimes it's a knock-on, sometimes it's not. I'm still learning <laughs> the rules, and there's certain times where I just, like, put my hands up, and I'm like, you know what, I don't know. So I just have to accept it. Right? Then the second half, Penrith gets one more try, and, uh, that's the last of the game, and there was a, there was a, uh, a, seg a segment where Melbourne is, like, ten feet away. <laughs> They're right up against the try line, and they get a six again, and then another six again, and they're, like, right there. They might have gotten one more as well. It might have been three, it might have only been two. But it felt like they got, like, twelve, eighteen <laughs> shots to try and get a try, and they couldn't. And Penrith ends up with the ball going the other way. And to me, right there, that kind of felt like the game was over. I think there was maybe still 15, 16 minutes when that part of the match happened. But it felt like if you're going to score, you have to score there. And they couldn't. Penrith ends up winning it 14-6, to six, a low-scoring affair, especially compared to last year. It was just weird, this Melbourne team, which just hung points on teams all season long. They would run up with a score, and it felt like they just lost their juice. They lost their swagger down the stretch a little bit, but I don't know, man. Again, I don't really know what I'm talking about. This is a sport I am still trying to understand. Uh, but all I know is I do enjoy watching it. I have fun watching the sport. And it's cool that the local team to where I moved to has been so successful since I moved here. I know it's kind of like, for the final time in NBA anal analogy, it would be like somebody moving to Golden to, to San Francisco in like 2017, and then immediately like buying up jerseys. I get it. Like I understand why uh, I've had some coworkers be like, eh, there, there's a couple para. Uh, guys at my work and a manly supporter as well and they've given me some ribbings about it but I'm not pretending to be like a diehard I just think it's cool to have a successful team and I've seen in Penrith the impact that the team being good has had like on the city and the community and I think that's really cool and positive um but anyway guys just a short little video here to start the week off. I do hope you guys had uh, a good weekend. Um, WWE Bad Blood tomorrow. Tomorrow. And then NFL. And then maybe some GeoGuessr and then NFL predictions down the week. But thank you guys so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more content just like this almost every single day. Until next time, guys.